Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa salatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa la haula wa la quwwata illa billahil aliyyil azim. Thank you so much brother Shahran and also a very good um evening to every one of us. Um Before tonight, okay, insyaAllah I will um, continue uh, our lecture on the Islamic epistemology and uh, worldview for development management, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, today is supposed to be uh, module number five, okay, for our lecture, inshallah. Uh, so, after um, today's class, inshallah, we'll be having another two modules, okay, um, for our topic on Islamic epistemology and worldview of development management. As um, as we all know, okay, maybe you have uh, already um, watched in the YouTube, or if you are, if this is the first time you join this class, okay. Our introduction uh, was on the 12th of August, and we already covered on conventional and Islamic development management, development management basic principles, okay. There are seven of them. And then we have a break for one month, and then we continue last week on conventional understanding uh, on Islamic worldview, and also Islam. Uh, sorry, conventional understanding on worldview and also epistemology. Okay, that's where um, our brother Shahran um, explained on the justified true belief. Okay. And for today, uh, we will cover Islamic worldview, all right? And the next one will be Islamic epistemology and also contemporary issues, okay? Uh, I would like to explain that um, this, this class might be a little different from, um, from our brother, um, assistant professor uh, Fatih Shehu. He also gave um, lecture on Islamic worldview. Okay, and also there are lecture, um, our online class, there are also lecture on Sharia and epistemology, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, because um, this class uh, will be discussing epistemology and worldview um, in the context of development management. Okay, in the context of development management. Uh, however, it is not uh, very different because the basic is still the Islamic Uh, worldview and also Islamic epistemology. Okay, right. Um, so why is it important to look into uh, to look into worldview, or why is it important that we have to discuss on Islamic worldview in um, doing or uh, in Uh, developing our world in managing our development. Okay, all right. This is the recap from what we've discussed before. Okay, um, there are conventional development theories. There are management uh, practices. Okay, uh, all right. In management, uh, in management, there are theories, but uh, basically most of them are more towards practices. Yeah, because uh, most of the management um, thinking, management thought, uh, were developed by practitioners. So, uh, were developed um, by uh, the practical uh, scholars who are in the management field itself. Okay, so um, these uh, theories, the conventional theories, um, 
from what we, we have discussed before arises uh, from two paradigms or two basic philosophical underpinnings, which is uh, the neoclassical philosophy. From that philosophy, we have the liberal capitalist system. And from there, um, there are theories, development theories, which is called growth theory and growth and distribution theory. Uh, amongst the, the most famous discussion on growth theory or uh, in a liberal capitalist system is the five stages of growth model by uh, Rostow. Okay. And the second philosophy, the major one is the radical philosophy, uh, which from there we have the socialist and communist system. Okay? And um, from there, uh, they develop the structuralist and dependency theory. Okay, structuralist and dependency theory. Okay, this is how our world has been working uh, all this while. Okay, all this while. And in the management side, okay, in the management side, this um, development, okay, that has been um, that has been uh, practiced uh, in the conventional world are more prone to customer satisfaction, customer oriented. Okay, customer oriented. That is why that is where we, we have the the quality standards, the customer is king uh, concept, and management are uh, always um, discussed in the organ organizational level. Okay, organizational level. Okay, this is um, what is happening uh, in, dominantly in our uh, contemporary world. Okay, if we go deeper, okay, on the conventional um, development management um, paradigm or thinking, okay, uh, the basic philosophy of development, which is the capitalist system and also the socialist system uh, is based from what we have discussed in our classes before, mainly is from the Eurocentric and Western ethnocentric paradigm. So that is where we, 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 we have the, the um, conventional uh, knowledge acquisition from only um, uh, the <coughs> rational aspects, okay, the rational aspect, the perspective, as, uh, the perception aspects, okay, uh, and also um, what is being termed as knowledge is only the ones that we can justify, the ones that we cannot justify, such as um, uh, life after death, okay, uh, life in the hereafter, um, are not considered as knowledge in the Western ethnocentric paradigm. Okay, and then um, both the capitalism and also the socialism systems that shares the same lines of knowledge. Okay, that is where um, uh, what uh, I've just discussed is now. All right, and then um, the un ultimate goal for both the systems. Okay, uh, even though it is said that the capitalism is the, 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 other, the other end or the, the, the contradict to uh, socialism, actually the, the ultimate goal of both systems is uh, indistinguishable where their main concerns is the maximization of production and consumption. These are what uh, have been the main concerns in both uh, the development systems. Um, they only use different terms. For example, um, for capitalism, they have um, factors of production, okay? Uh, but for the socialism, they just may, uh, merely use a uh, different terms, okay? And so this system, has been uh, the worldview of today's development management activities, today's development management establishment. Okay, 
So if you we are we are developing or if you are going to um, uphold our Islamic development management, okay, it is it will be problematic. It will be uh, very very problematic to um, take into account or even to use these systems, okay, to use these systems because. Um, we have discussed before this on the issues of these systems. Okay. So from there, okay, here comes the first principle of um, Islamic-based development and also Islamic development management where Islamic worldview, okay, Islamic worldview, which is based from the Islamic epistemology should be the mold that would shape the development management okay the mold that would shape the development management not the philosophies or aspects or elements that comes from outside of the islamic paradigm outside of islamic worldview or contradicts with the islamic epistemology okay and this is the first principles that um is being stated as this is uh, the principle of Islamic development management. Okay. So, why? Why actually do we, we have to take into account, do we have to discuss, do we have to um, highlight that the basis of Islamic development management, the mold that should shape the development management, the Islamic development management is the Islamic worldview. Okay. First, um, there are two stages. There are two stages of development management, which is the philosophical aspects and the operational aspects. The philosophical aspects is the core. Okay, it's the core. Usually we we usually only see the operational aspects okay to use the technology to use um, the digit the digital uh, elements of development okay to use the tools okay but we seldom look into the core okay we seldom look into the core if the operational aspect has um, no direct relationship with the core or the philosophical underpinning, then it should not be problematic. But if the operational or the tools that is being used comes or have a basic of conventional philosophy, then it should be, it would be a problem to use this. So in development management, we should always assess whether the the theories, okay, the concepts that we are using in developing, in managing our uh, our development, is it um, is it construct within the conventional values or not? So that is why the discussion of Islamic worldview is very important in order to ensure that the development management is truly Islamic, okay? And um, in the contemporary world, okay, in the contemporary world, there are also scholars that um, try as much as uh, possible to accommodate um, a few or some of the conventional aspects. We can see this through the SDGs, okay, SDGs, um, where we have um, certain goals, okay, that has been highlighted, okay, all over the world. But how far, okay, uh, are these goals um, comes from the Islamic worldview, Islamic paradigm? Okay, when you say about um, Poverty. When you say about when we discuss about um, the basics of human rights, okay, um, is it really uh, 
from the Islamic paradigm, or actually it comes from a conventional paradigm, and uh, we just use it uh, for our development. Okay, so we really have to look into what is the worldview. Okay, so uh, it would not really um, the same if we come or uh, develop our development and management from Islamic worldview as opposed to uh, using or uh, try to accommodate the, the, the conventional development, the conventional management, and just add some Islamic values to it. Okay, because the, the, the basic is very different. Uh, last week, we discussed on um, the knowledge, okay, the knowledge where um, things that cannot be uh, justified uh, rationally, okay, or from our, our uh, perceptions is not considered as knowledge. So this is so much different from our Islamic paradigm, okay, from what has been, has been uh, stated in the Al-Quran. And it also would not uh, be proper, and it should not be done where um, the contemporary or the, the conventional aspects or theories um, is just mainly uh, being added a few of Quranic verses to justify them. This is uh, this has been done um, uh, dominantly, okay, in in uh, in the management uh, field. Okay, where they usually um, justify the, the total quality management, the Kaizen concept, <clears throat> um, the 7S concept, or the management by objective concept through Quranic verses or through the, um, through the, uh, the, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Okay. So it won't be enough actually. What we should do is, is actually to come up uh, a development which is based from Islamic worldview. Okay, the, sec the third one, the third <coughs> issue, uh, why we should go into Islamic worldview uh, to be the basis of development management is the elect, okay. Uh, there's a spelling mistake here. Yeah? The electric uh, method. Okay, eclectic method. Uh, eclectic is um, a concept usually used in education and also language uh, field where um, concepts are being picked and used um, according to requirements. Okay, according to requirements. So we only choose what is best or what is what suits uh, our needs. Okay, not uh, looking at the holistic, looking at something holistically and comprehensively. Okay, uh, whereas um, in our Islamic teachings, actually, um, something, all of the things, okay, uh, has been outlined to us in the Quran and also in the uh, in uh, in Hadith, uh, in the Sunnah, where everything uh, has been guidelined on how. We are supposed to develop and manage the development. Okay. All right. Uh, and the third one is um, development management is not merely a physical and materialistic aspect. Okay. Um, it also comes from the intangibles aspect. Okay. The spirituality of the man. Okay. The things that we cannot. Um, cannot perceived okay by our uh, senses uh, the things that we cannot really rationalize okay so that is why Islamic um, worldview should be the basis in uh, development management okay um, what is actually the Islamic worldview okay um, Actually, the discussion, the con uh, contemporary discussion of Islamic worldview by the Islamic scholars, okay, um, early uh, in early in the uh, millennium, okay, in the 
20th century, uh, we can find a discussion by uh, Said Kutub, okay, in his, uh, in his uh, book, Khosa is al Tasawur al Islami wa Mukawimatu, um, where it has been uh, translated, uh, and the title is Basic Principles of uh, Islamic Worldview. Okay, basic, basic principles of Islamic worldview. And um, actually, this um, systematically, he has, um, he tried to um, come up, okay, uh, with the saying that the Islamic worldview should not only uh, be, or Islamic practice should not only about uh, prayers, okay, and it should come from uh, the purity of Islamic thinking, okay, and should be based on the Akidah Islamia. And the heart and also the Akal is the basis of worldview, okay, um, and yeah, um, lately uh, his thinking has been uh, quite um, controversial, so uh, it has been related to terrorism, but um, if we are interested, you can uh, read yourself uh, his book on the basic principles of Islamic worldview. Okay, um, I think it, it is published, uh, uh, the latest one in 1994, I think. Okay, and uh, he used the term at sawr uh, al Islami lil wujud, okay, uh, in uh, in his um, writings. Okay, the next one uh, by uh, Muhammad Nakib al Atas, who used the term uh, Ruyah al Islam lil wujud, and uh, he is the one who really distinguish uh, the difference. Okay, the difference, the big differences between the Western and the Islamic views. And he also uh, criticized um, on some of the scholars who use Nazra al Islam lil al Kaun um, as the Islamic um, worldview. Because um, to him, okay, to him, uh, it is not explaining the Islamic worldview as a whole, holistically, comprehensively. So, um, to him, it should be Rukiyah al-Islam al-Wujud to explain the views, how Islam view, view the world uh, comprehensively, okay? And um, at the same time, okay, there are also a literature by Ismail al-Faruqi uh, who refer Islamic worldview as Nazrah al-Islamiyah ilal al waqiyah and uh, for Muhammad Said al uh, he in his uh, writing, he explained on uh, the kaunia, okay, on the, the world, uh, which is not only perceived as what we understand, as what human beings understand, but also as stated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as should be known and to be believed uh, by and it, it include every creation, okay? it include every creation. So these are the, the, uh, the perspectives okay, of some of the Islamic scholars on Islamic worldview. Okay? Some of the Islamic scholars and Islamic worldview. Actually the discussion on, on Islamic worldview is, is still, okay? it still come from the basic of Islam from the more than uh, 1,400 years ago but it has been um, uh, our Islamic scholars here um, try to come up with a more conventional or contemporary uh, which um, relate more to um, us now. Okay. All right. I quote from um, Said Muhammad Nakib al Atas. Okay. Said Muhammad Nakib al Atas. Uh, on what uh, he defined uh, Islamic worldview is, okay, the meaning of uh, Islamic worldview according to Sayyid Muhammad Nakib al Atas. Um, in his book, Pro Prolegomena 
um, of metaphysics of Islam, okay, where he said that an authenticity and finality that points out what is ultimate. So this is really uh, the, the difference between what uh, has been uh, outlined in the conventional worldview and uh, Islamic worldview. Because um, in conventional worldview, uh, uh, the worldview, the understanding is, uh, it comes around on what has been, um, what can be rationalized by human being and what can be perceived by uh, human beings, okay? And what uh, has been experienced by human being, okay? Um, and usually, okay, usually it covers uh, the physical, the, in, uh, the tangible aspects, the physical aspects. And even though some may say it, it also includes the non-physical or non-material, but uh, it closely relate, related to what can be seen by the um, physical eyes, okay? Uh, and um, the elements are permanently established because uh, it is established by the absolute knowledge in Islam. That is the revelation of the Quran, okay? So it is what, it is not what is perceived by human beings where it has to be changed by era, it has to be changed um, by culture, it has to be changed um, um, according to uh, what can be justified and not justified by human beings themselves, okay? So the basics of uh, Islamic development management, which we can learn from the Islamic worldview, is actually, it should be shaped by the revelation, okay, the Quran, Okay, and it has to evolve from within the mold of Islamic worldview itself, not from the conventional paradigm, not from the conventional philosophy, and not from the conventional system. Okay, so it has to be free from the capitalism system, the capitalist system, and also the socialist system, and even the Marxist system. Okay. And it should not come from within the mold of the neoclassical nor the radical philosophy of the conventional development construct. Anything, including uh, on how we define poverty, for instance, on how we de define uh, justice, for instance, on how we define um, human rights, for instance, on how we define um, sustainable, for instance, okay? So, what comes from the Islamic worldview, okay? Where this is what uh, shape or the mold of Islamic development management, we can see the difference through views on men or views on human being, okay? Um, Islamic worldview, okay, look at human being beyond the functions of merely homo economicus as being seen in the conventional development management. Okay, the conventional development management will um, focus human beings as um, men that can, that have uh, economic relationship, whether they are producers, whether they are uh, consumers, okay, whether they are laborers. So, usually that is how the Western or the conventional worldview will look into men. However, in the Islamic worldview, okay, men in the development management context upholds the status of servants and vicegrim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, Abdullah and also Khalifatullah. This has been stated in the Azariya, okay, verse 56, and also Al-Baqarah in verse 30. Besides that, besides the status of Abdullah and also Khalifatullah, man carries the task according to the contract that has been stated earlier. Okay, 
This has been stated in the Al A'raf, verse 172. And in upholding development management, okay, the activities in the development management, human being is seen have to maintain the status of the servant and vice president of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how to maintain this status is to look into the level of iman and nafs, the desire, okay? So this is not discussed in the conventional development management um, concept, okay? Because these are the ones, the knowledge or the belief that cannot be justified. How do we um, detect Iman and how do we detect the nafs? Okay, but we know this is true and this is the basic of our development management because it has been stated in the Al-Quran, okay? For example, just now, um, okay, in the Surah al zariyah and also Surah Al-Baqarah, where here Allah has stated that He only created jinns and mans that they may serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, and in the Al-Baqarah, verse uh, 30, Allah has said that He created he wants to create a vice queen on earth. Okay, this is the dialogue between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the malaika. And this is the contract which um, has been stated in Al A'raf, okay, verse 172, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked, Alas to be Rabbikum. Okay, am I not your Lord? Okay, and actually, we did testify. We did testify called Lubala Shahidna. So our development management in the present world must be shaped from this revelation. Okay? This is why Islamic worldview is very important as the basis and as the mold of development management. Okay. And the last point, okay, to maintain the status of servant and vice president of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay, we should look at the level of iman and nafs. And this is also state, stated in the Al-Quran, okay, here, all right, where Allah talk about, inna nafsa la ammara bisu. La ammaratun bisu, okay? Uh, the ammarah level of nafs. The ammarah level of nafs, okay? Which is prone to evil. So, in order to maintain our status, okay, as Khalifatullah, as Abdullah, we should um, look into our nafs so that it is not in the category of Nafsu Ammara. Okay. And then in um, Surah al qiyamah this is from Surah Yusuf. Okay. This is from Surah Yusuf, verse 53. And from Surah Qiyamah, okay, um, the second verse, uh, it has stated on the Nafsu Lawamma, self reproaching spirit. Okay. Self reproaching spirit where when uh, you did something, you did something sinful, okay, you reproach yourself and you try to improve yourself, okay, and it, it goes around, you, you, you did something sinful again, so you self-reproach and you try to improve yourself. And the third one is nafsu mutma'inna, okay, uh, incomplete rest and satisfaction. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. Okay. Radiyatam mardiya. So, this is how uh, from the Islamic worldview, we should maintain our status and we should do in uh, doing 
or in developing or in managing development. Okay, these are the basics from the Islamic worldview. Okay, and how do we perceive, how do we view the worlds? Okay, in conventional um, thinking or in conventional worldview, the world or the time scale is only confined to the present world, a dunya. Okay, while, while in Islamic worldview, as was said earlier, okay, we have established contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the world of Malakul, okay, where we had testified that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our God and our world stretches up to the hereafter, the al-akhirah. Okay, so it, it is not merely the present world and this should be what has been guiding us in how we should develop and how we should behave in developing or in managing development. Okay, what is the essence? According to Islamic worldview, development essence. Okay, the essence is the, the three pillars, okay, Tawheed, Fiqh and Tasawuf. How, why these three because Tawhid will ensure us that the development is done only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for the sake of others, okay? Not for the sake of material um, aspects, not for the sake of ourselves, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Fiqh will ensure us that the development is undertaken within the rules and regulations of Islam. How do we build our buildings okay how do we throw our waste how do we um, come together as a team okay how do we lead how do we follow so this has been stated in the thick aspects and tasawuf ensures that every aspect of development should be carried out within the Islamic worldview. Okay, so these are the three pillars that should be the development management essence. And um, the basics, okay, worship, which in Islam we have three three types of worship, the basic worships where uh, the five times uh, daily prayer, okay, the Ramadan um, fast, okay, the hajj, and also the commendable practices, the sadaqah, the zik, should not um, be left out because it will entail the spiritual development. As we look development only not in the physical or material aspects, it also consists the spiritual aspects, the spiritual development, it needs basic worship and commendable commendable practices in Islam and the general worship such as you study, you work will be, will lead to physical and material development. So that is the development essence. Okay, how do we regard natural resources from the Islamic worldview? Okay, it is different from conventional because it is not regarded as given. In conventional, we regard natural resources as given. So we sometimes people would um, try to as much as possible use what is uh, the natural resources that they have, okay? Uh, exploit them as much as possible in order to produce something, in order to give output to the de de development and management because it is regarded as given, okay? But uh, from the Islamic point of view, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and owner of the natural resources and he can give to whomever he wants and he can take from whomever he wants. So that is the big difference. So uh, here are the, the verses, the Quranic verses on who is the ultimate owner of the natural resources. Okay, and what is the relationship actually? Okay, 
the functions of these natural resources and the relationship with man. Okay, where we have to use all the natural resources ethically and not just exploiting them as much as we, as we want. Okay, and um, we have discussed on the scarcity of resources and the un unlimited ones, which from the Islamic worldview, the resources are actually sufficient for all under the concept of risk. Okay, risky and man is actually able to limit his wants through maintaining the status of the nafs and also iman. Okay, we have also the concept of barakah, blessings, which re reflects the utility in having, where using or consuming is not measured by quantitative aspect, but rather qualitative aspect. Okay, and the ultimate aim from the Islamic worldview is hasanah fi dunya wal akhirah, and this could only be achieved with mabda tilla. Okay, with mabda tilla. If only Allah pleased with us. So that is the Islamic worldview concept of development management, which is very different and um, should be actually we look into in whatever aspects of development management we are uh, doing. So uh, basically, inshallah, this is um, the discussion for tonight. I give uh, to Brother Shahran back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, we have the first question from Brother Abdullah. Okay. Uh, what are the basic methods do we follow to create a vivid image of an Islamic technology in regard to physical and spiritual development. Okay, what are the basic methods we follow to create a vivid image? All right. Um, okay. Actually, we will discuss this uh, in our next um, class, which uh, the Islamic epistemology of development management. But uh, basically, okay, basically, um, uh, in the Quran also, it has stated that um, the, the ultimate aim, the ultimate aim of knowledge, okay, knowledge acquisition, is to gain al-yakin. So we have three aspects of al-yakin, that is ilmul yakin, um, aynul yakin, and also haqqul yakin. The ilmul yakin is where al-yakin we gain from our knowledge. The Ain Yakin is something that we gain um, Yakin from what we perceived. Okay, and also the Hakkul Yakin is the basics uh, of Yakin where it is, uh, it cannot be uh, questions. It, it cannot be questioned. So, inshallah, we will discuss this more next week. Uh, what are the current research uh, trend on some uh, development. On? What are the current research are being undertaken? What are the current issues uh, written on, uh, on this topic? Okay, and in Islamic development, yeah. basically, um, because um, everything, uh, everything uh, lately has been related to uh, the SDGs, okay? okay. So um, basically, uh, most of the research usually uh, questioning on whether the mechanism, uh, for instance, zakat should be used um, in discussing the poverty, the, the first uh, goal in SDG, okay? Uh, is it uh, proper uh, to use uh, an Islamic uh, mechanism uh, in order to to uh, to go for the conventional objective, or either we should come up with the Islamic view of SDGs. Okay, it is among others uh, the research that has been done uh, lately. Brother Nuruddin, uh, currently there is a strong discourse in the academic world about institutional systematic racism. 
how can we link the Islamic worldview with the developmentalism project that will ensure racism can be contained in such a way? Okay. Um, yeah. In the Quran also, okay, if we go back to the basic of our knowledge, um, actually the, the creation of Allah, subha- of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the so many races in in this world it's, it's actually to to make us come into one to unite us and if we see if we always look at the differences between us then of course it will ke- create so much um controversies and also um so many i mean uh, conflicts okay due to racism and if we go back on what is the hikmah in in so many um, kinds of people that Allah have created we could understand actually it is a blessing instead of a conflict so uh, we should go back and um, look into agree into um, um, being different as opposed to look at the differences and go far uh, from each other, okay? Because we 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 all uh, comes from Adam actually. And um, the third one. How do Muslim professionals in different disciplines infuse or integrate this Islamic worldview in their respective field? Okay. If they were. All right. Uh, so this is actually um, what what should we do okay um take uh try to look into the islamic basics the islamic uh studies basics okay the islamic principles uh in the discipline of um usuluddin in the discipline of fiqh in the discipline of usul fiqh and try to uh use it Okay, as in my case, in, in the management uh, aspect, and maybe in your case, in the political aspects, in the um, social aspects, all of this knowledge is actually, um, we have everything in the Quran, in the Hadith. It only wait for us to use it, to operationalize, operationalize it, and come up with models, okay, which I... Um, I am confident it is more is better a lot lot better than the conventional systems actually because it comes from our creator. Um, why don't you mention the role of society in development management? Okay, yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, actually, uh, of course. Okay. Um. Uh. Yeah. I. I admit that I. I did not mention specifically on the role of society, which uh, should become um, after after we have, uh, because just now, as I, I mentioned, the basic um, essence of development is from the three pillars, okay, the Tawheed, the Fiqh, and also the Tasawuf, is actually the uh, Fardu Ain aspect. And from there, actually, we come up with the Fardu Kifaya, where here comes the societal aspects of development management. So uh, from the individual, we should come up with a more, uh, a bigger concept of development in the society where um, a group of people have to look into what they can give to another society or another person. Uh, then uh, this is the discussion in Fadu Kifaya. I did not mention specifically, inshallah, um, I will take that into account. Thank you so much, Brother Abdul Fattah. Okay, any more? So, uh, you have been teaching for 10 years this subject. What are the current issues that your student brought? In the class? Okay. Um, all right. Uh, actually, I, uh, I start teaching this uh, subject in the yard. Yeah, it, it is uh, 2010 now, okay. Um, basically, uh, most of the discussion uh, on the Islamic worldview and also the Islamic epistemology is on the, actually the differences of understanding in uh, the Islamic sects, uh, sect, uh, 
uh, in in Islam where the discussion on uh, the modern or the the modern Islamic scholars as opposed to the traditional Islamic scholars uh, on certain certain aspects okay on development okay on uh, even uh, relationship in society okay and also um, what are the basics uh, for example in management okay how do we look into the concept of halal and toyiban from uh, the Islamic epistemology and Islamic worldview, worldview uh, point? Because uh, now we only have standards, okay? Uh, standards which is uh, so much relate to the conventional uh, thinking, uh, the ISO uh, 1500. Even though it is Islamic standards, actually, it, it is um, so much affected by the conventional thinking where um, in management, I, I explained this now, uh, are more customer oriented as opposed to uh, the basics of Islamic worldview. Okay? Uh, when we talk about halal, we, we usually think about how do we please our customers. That, that is why we come up with, um, yeah, uh, terms like uh, Muslim friendly as opposed to halal hotel, Muslim friendly hotel, because we are thinking on um, uh, what we should do in order to gain as much um, person um, that would um, not uh, perceive us as um, too Islamic. Okay, we are trying to universalize our our. Uh, our concepts of development. Whereas uh, actually, uh, on the other hand, we have uh, the Islamicity Index, where it, it came from the conventional, uh, the conventional uh, uh, people, where they come up with a few uh, indicators to, to measure the Islamicity Index. And usually the countries that uh, have won Oh, and in the top of Islamicity index are the non-Muslim countries. So we are trying to go away from the Islamic term, but actually uh, the, the Western world are going to the Islamic terms as opposed to us. So there are some of the issues actually with the Shahran. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that's really to go deep of this SDG also. Yeah. All the values, all the discussion. Yeah, inshallah. Us, uh, inshallah, uh, these uh, issues uh, we will discuss in the the final uh, lecture on the contemporary issues of development management. Inshallah. Okay, Prof. Any final remarks? Okay, thank you so much for everyone. Uh, inshallah, uh, I will. I. I always uh, welcome for any uh, input uh, or any comments. Yeah, um, in in my slides there are my emails and also um, you can message me. Yeah, inshallah. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Brother Thank you, thank you, thank you inshallah. Thank you, Prof. We'll see everyone for next class. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam, warahmatullah.